Hi, it's Mike from AskTractorMike.com. One attachment that a lot of people get when they buy a tractor is a box blade. And box blades are really useful tools, both for leveling ground and for maintaining gravel driveways. Today we're going to talk about what to look at when buying a box blade, number one, and then I'm going to show you this box blade in use on a, on a driveway and explain how to use it and adjust it. Uh, this particular box blade is my favorite type. It's a free one. I don't actually own a box blade. I borrowed this off my neighbors. Uh, th this particular box blade is old, kind of ugly, and it's seen its better days. It's had some welding done on it, but it'll work just fine for illustration purposes today. So let's say you're getting ready to buy a box blade. First thing to look at is how thick is the metal on the box blade. And um, there's a tube that goes down the center of the box blade. And on the more expensive box blades, those will be heavier built and reinforced. And on the cheaper ones, they'll be lighter. Um, the next thing to look at is, of course, the sides and the back. Uh, the part that takes a lot of stress is this back part here uh, where the cutting edge is. And you want to make sure that's pretty thick metal and, and pretty well built. The cutting edge is the next thing we're going to look at, and that's really the business end of the box blade. You want a curved cutting edge for, for digging, and a lot of the more expensive box blades have a replaceable cutting edge. The cheaper ones will just have a, a welded piece of metal right there. So you want, you want the replaceable hardened steel cutting edge if, if you can get it. Uh, the next thing we're going to look at is how does it hook to the tractor. The cheaper box blades have pins that stick out that you'll put your three-point arms around. The more expensive box blades will have a couple of brackets that come out and they go on each side of the three-point arms of the tractor and then you put a pin through there. I like that setup better. It's probably a little easier to attach number one, and number two, it's stronger. Uh, box blades take a lot of torque, and if you have two brackets there, that's better than having just the one pin. The next thing we're going to look at on the box blade is the ripper teeth, or scarifiers. And these are teeth that every box blade comes with, and, and they, they allow you to dig down in the ground if you're, if you're trying to move compacted soil. Uh, you got to watch out for roots and everything with them. There are a couple of different ways they attach. Uh, to the main frame of the box blade that you kind of want to look at. The one I like the best is the one with holes through it, uh, where, and there's a little loop on the box blade where you put a pin through to keep them up or down. That's, that's my favorite. Uh, the second kind is one that's kind of got a notch in the ripper teeth that attaches to the frame of the box blade. I like these less. All of this stuff, I'm going to tell you, if you find a good deal on a box blade on, a bl a box blade on Craigslist, and it has none of these things, you're probably going to be okay. Because for a homeowner, just about any box blade will do the trick. If you're going to be using it a lot and putting it under a lot of stress, you need heavier built box blade. Okay, when using your box blade, first thing we're going to do, hook it up to the tractor and make sure it's level. And that's level from front to back and level from side to side. And that's if you're just leveling out dirt. What we're going to do today is to try to, we've got an old driveway that's not been used a lot lately. It has a really high crown on it. And what we're going to do is work up that crown and then we're going to spread it out. So we want, we want the box blade level. Now a little trick on a box blade, if you back up, you're going to get more digging power than if you're driving forward. And if you think about it, that's the reason bulldozers have the blade on the front and not on the back. So we're actually making our our tractor more into a bulldozer. So we're going to take our tractor and we're going to back up with, with everything level against that crown on the driveway. And what that's going to do, that's going to work that gravel up to the surface and let us knock that down and get it a little, little more level. It's also going to take the grass out of the center of the driveway. Now, when we're done with that process and we've kind of worked up the worked up the gravel a little bit, we're going to come the other way to level it out. And before I do that, I'm going to adjust my box blade so it has a slight angle to one side. And the reason I'm doing that, when you think about it, you don't want your driveway dead level. If it's dead level, water's going to stand in it. And when I'm spreading my gravel, I'm going to drive down the right side and then turn around and come back the left side. So I'm, I'm making the same angle on both sides of the driveway. 
And if I'm doing this right, this is going to make me a, an excellent driveway. A lot of times your, your gravel gets worked down in the soil, and when you run the box blade over it, it's going to bring it back up to the surface, and it's going to make your driveway just a lot more usable and save you money having to get more gravel to put on the driveway. It's about 20 minutes later. The job is finished. Using the push first and then drag forward. In other words, reverse first and cut the crown and then drag forward and let the gravel just kind of sift through the box blade and this is what it looks like. It looks like a brand new driveway. One last thing about picking out a box blade for your tractor, make sure you measure the back tire width of your tractor and get a box blade that's slightly wider than the tractor. This particular box blade barely cuts out the tires of the tractor. If I were buying one, I'd try to get one just a little bit wider.